My name is Derek, and today I'm going to be showing you a repair that I've talked about in a previous video, and that is how to remove the non-genuine display message that pops up when replacing the screen. The phone that I'm going to be working on is an iPhone 13 Pro Max that previously required a full housing swap along with a new display. And at the filming of this video, I didn't have a way to transfer True Tone because the programmers that I had access to didn't cover the 13 Pro Max. Towards the end of the video, I'm going to be going over in detail why part of what I did in the video didn't work and what the solution is for it. This is a longer video than normal, but I cover everything that you need to know about how to transfer the display IC to remove that message and more on True Tone. Let's get into the video. So we've got again that 13 Pro Max that we did the housing swap on in the screen. And you'll see when we go into the settings, we've got this uh, important display message and we have no true tone, see, no true tone in the phone either. So let's go ahead and get that taken care of. Now, if you recall, I didn't put the adhesive around the border. I knew I was gonna come back to this, make the uh, removal a little easier. Pop up the screen, remove the screen out, take off the shield for the battery in the display. We'll go ahead and disconnect the battery. We'll unscrew the bracket for the proximity sensor. Set the screen aside. Programmers like this are normally really nice, but they don't support the 13 Pro and 13 Pro Max, 14 Pro or 14 Pro Max. So does that mean I have to transfer over this IC? But who knows, I'm not even sure if the true tone is stored here. So I've got my temperature at around 300 degrees Celsius. My airflow is pretty low, and I'm using my little scraping tool to go and remove the underfill from around it. Getting comfortable with it, practicing basically for when I go to have for when I have to go and to do the same thing on the good display. We'll pull off that IC, or I really have no idea if it actually stores true tone but uh, we're gonna swap it anyway. And then I'm gonna do the same with the display IC. This is the one that I mostly care about because in replacing it, I will definitely get the message to disappear. So using my same technique, 300 degrees Celsius, gonna go around and remove the bordering uh, uh, underfill and then carefully work it under, making sure I'm not pulling any pads uh, I'm just cutting through it as the solder is liquid and it'll pop right off. The majority of the underfill stayed on the IC, which is not too hard to clean up. So I'm just going to clamp it here in my little uh, fixture. I'm going to add some solder paste. This is 138 uh, solder paste. I'm going to get my soldering iron and we're going to go in and add 138 to basically all the pads that will accept it. Gently moving it around. This will kind of help to start breaking up the underfill, um, but I really want to just deposit the uh, solder onto the pads if possible. Add some flux to help this process go a little smoother. Go back in with the iron. Try to remove kind of the underfill without scraping the IC too much. You can kind of see the, the actual color of the board start to break through the black here and there. Now I'm going to take my wick, and this will really break up any more of the underfill, and it'll also suck up the factory solder and the 138 solder. You can definitely see it kind of push all of the black underfill off as I kind of go back and forth gently over the top of this, and now it's exposing all of the pads that were oxidized and uh, below the, uh, the underfill. Add some isopropyl alcohol and clean this up because that flux is getting kind of burnt. To help my brush stay a little cleaner, I'm going to use a microfiber cloth. Help kind of absorb some of that with some isopropyl alcohol and some scrubbing. We go in and add some flux and some more solder paste. And this will really help bring back to life all of the solder pads that are oxidized as we go over them, and it'll also kind of break up the uh, the flux that, uh, that I'm trying to get off. And now I'm going to take some wick. I'm going to carefully go over and remove all of that solder, getting it nice and clean without scraping any more of the uh, 
the thin coating of green that this uh, the bottom of the IC has. You can kind of see some of the traces start to poke through there, but I haven't eaten all the way through the layer, so it's not like they're going to pick up solder just yet. But they're they're getting close. There's a couple spots that I that are getting pretty close. So with some isopropyl alcohol, my brush, we're going to really clean off all of the the flux, prepping this IC for reballing. I'm going to go around the border real quick and kind of scrape up any of the excess underfill and stuff that's spilled over the edges. I'll just clean it up a little bit. Now let's look at the other IC. I'm going to add some flux. I'm going to go straight to wicking this one, see how much of the factory solder we can get off. You can see it's absorbing quite a bit of it. Not all of it, but most of it. It's coming up and through. It's definitely not breaking through the uh, underfill that much. I'm just going to clean off some of that burnt flux there, come back in with some more flux, and some solder paste. Again, this is only 138 solder paste. And now we're going to use it to kind of help break up the underfill and get those pads nice and tinned. And I'm really not scraping hard, but I can definitely feel the uh, underfill and kind of push through it and break it up without scraping the surface of the IC. You can see me kind of push it away. The heat from the iron paired with that tip kind of really helps break it up. And there's a good chance that I'm doing all of this kind of for no reason because I really have no idea if this is going to bring back true tone or not. But there doesn't seem to be a solution yet in the industry, so I might be doing this and as a waste of time, but we won't know unless we try. Now that I've broken up all of the underfill, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, Get this uh, kind of cleaned up, add some isopropyl alcohol and brush, really brush away any of the, uh, the, the gunk there. Now let's go back and remove all of the solder, so I'll add some flux. Get out our wick, and let's uh, pull off all of that solder. Now let's just uh, give it one last cleaning before moving on to uh, reballing it. For reballing, I'm going to be using this. This is the iPhone 10 through 14 Pro Max Display IC reballing platform. It's really nice because it's got a magnet that kind of pulls the the the, uh, the stencils down. What we'll do is we'll stick this on, and we'll go and get them reballed. I'm going to put our stencil over the top, and it'll kind of snap down with those magnets and hold itself in position. You can make small adjustments to really kind of dial it in, but. Now it's going to hold itself in place, which is kind of nice. I'm going to take my solder paste. I've dried it off on a, a microfiber cloth, getting rid of some of that flux, make it a little easier to work with. We're going to kind of smear it into those holes, trying to get an as even of a spread as possible throughout the stencil. I'm going to come in with my heat gun. Got it set at about 300 degrees Celsius, which is typically where I like to stay for, uh, for the majority of this repair. And we'll slowly heat up the, basically heating up the stencil so that the solder starts to form the solder balls and we'll move across it just like that. Now we can let, lift the stencil up. I'm going to go back in with the, uh, with the gun real quick and give it one more flow. Get those uh, solder balls to center themselves just like that. Now let's take a look at this other IC. Let me see if I can find a stencil that's compatible with this ball grid array sizing and, and spacing. Uh, that's not going to work. Oh, next stencil. This is the biggest one on this stencil, I think. Yeah, none of these are going to, none of these are going to work. Shoot, let's try another stencil. Mm, nope, nope. Nothing here looks like it's going to work. Nope, another one. And another, maybe this one. Nope, nope. This one kind of looks like it might line up, but it's definitely not the right count. And I've checked basically every stencil at this point that I have for this, so we're going to have to kind of do it the uh, the long and tedious way. So I'm just going to uh, create solder balls that we're going to have to place individually on this IC. So I'll... All right, now let's uh, go ahead and create our own little uh, assortment of solder balls that we can pick from. Now I'm going to go through the tedious process of placing individual solder balls, just like this one right here, 
on the IC itself. There's one, two. And the last two, one left, and we're done. Now for the part that I've dreaded the most, let's flow these all on without the solder balls running all over the, each other. Oh, and we got two that are wanting to stick together. Let's go and uh, separate those. This is gonna be the hard part, keeping them apart. Let's see if we can get it to stay. I'm gonna set this one aside for later. And let's go back to warming this up, see if we can get them to start to settle without more of them wanting to stick together. Nice and slowly warming it up. Oh, another two kiss over here. Let's separate those two. And let's go back in with the heat. Basically using indirect heat right now, not directly onto the uh, IC, but really heating up the platform and it's going to heat the IC up. And now they're all starting to suck onto their little pads. Let's move some of these guys back into position. Go on the other side and let's heat it from this direction. Indirect heat and they're starting to pop into place. Good. Let's go back to the other side and do the same thing again. Almost all of them. There we go. Let's put back the last straggler here and heat it up. There we go. That top corner is looking a little dry, so let's add some flux, get some more heat on it, and there we go. Nicely rebulbed. All right, so we need to isolate the ICs from the uh, the back of the display so we don't burn it. So I'm just gonna add some isopropyl alcohol to the flex cable here. I'm gonna put it on a, a heat plate. Carefully lift up the flex cable. Taking my time. Slide a uh, metal under the flex here. And I'm going to do one more barrier to be uh, extra safe there. Now I've isolated the chips, making for much easier removal without damaging the display. So we'll go under the microscope. All right, got my airflow kind of at a lower, at a very low, maybe 10% airflow here. 300 degrees Celsius coming in nice and warm with my scraping tool kind of at an angle so that it's not actually scraping against the flex, but it is removing the underfill around the border. And the screen's wanting to move a lot on me here, but uh, I'm going to work with it the way I've got it. Scrape under that stuff over there. I don't care too much for this IC because we're replacing it, but I do care about the flex cable under it. I'm really going to be cautious about making any marks on it. We'll go up the side here, kind of scraping at the top portion, get rid of all of that underfill. Again, trying to do this without uh, making any scrape marks. I'm going to go on the edge here, kind of probing, feeling for when it's starting to kind of break through the, uh, the, the, the solder, cutting through the underfill at the same time. I can feel that we're definitely up to temperature. Now we just got to get it to want to slide in just like that. We're just going to keep sliding it across, keeping that heat nice and on there. We should get it to pop away any second now. The underfill is really holding on to it. And there it is. You can see here, the underfill basically all came off, leaving me with uh, basically just a bare flex cable. All right, let's do the same thing with the IC here. Come in with uh, oh, 300. Might have to increase the temperature just a little bit, but I'm not really going to go above 320, 330. The heat's going to get sucked away a little quicker here in the middle of the flex. But we're going to go along the edge and really scrape up the underfill without scraping the flex. I want to avoid lifting any of that paint because when the paint starts to go, then, then it really wants to go. I'm avoiding putting the actual tip of my scraping tool on the flex itself or just letting the, the edge of it kind of 
push through and break up the underfill. See, it all wants to kind of come off nicely. I've had the heat on here for a good few, few minutes now, and I can really feel that the solder is really starting to break up, so I'm going to be a little bit more aggressive here, pushing in under it. I can feel it starting to slip under there. It's breaking through the solder and the underfill. Now, even though this process does take time, it sure beats grinding off the IC. Definitely not as messy, and I've had it work pretty much every single time. There, it's finally starting to let me through. So I'm just going to keep the heat on there, and we're going to kind of push it through. It might feel like you're kind of brute forcing it, but it's kind of what has to happen anyway, because that underfill really likes to hold on to it. Coming in nice and flat, so I'm not scraping anything. And we're going to go around and push it all off one side like that, and then we'll come over to the other side. We're going to push through this way, and it should just pop right off. And there it goes. And again, you can see the majority of the underfill is not on the flex cable. All right, I've removed the basically the majority of the protectors. We still have the metal between the flex cable and the display. And I'm gonna come in with a low airflow, 300 degrees Celsius, and we're gonna carefully scrape off the remaining underfill. Just like this. There's really not a whole lot left. Just a little bit around the border, a little bit here in the middle. You can see all of these pads that are really oxidized. Let's move on down to the other one, do the same thing, clean up any of the underfill that's still around the border. Really not a whole lot. There's a little here. This side's pretty clear. This side's more like residue. It's good. And you can see the flex cable's pretty much intact. We're going to add some flux here and add some solder paste to really make sure these uh, solder pads get tinned nice and properly. And we'll just keep going over them, really making sure all of them are nice and tinned. We're going to be removing all of the solder, but I want to make sure they're all free of oxidation. All right, now for the important chip. Let's do the same thing. Let's get this back in focus. Add some flux. Come in with the soldering iron. And we're going to add a little bit of solder paste. Probably need more than that. And let's go over each row. See if we can tin all of these pads. Add some more solder paste. That's not nearly enough. And if, I, and if any of these pads get pulled throughout this process, especially if you're being as careful as I am, they're probably pads that don't really connect to anything. There are a bunch of either grounder pads that really don't belong to anything or no stuff pads under this I see from my experience. Now that they're all tinned, I'm going to take my wick. Let's go and suck, up all, suck them all up. Get them all nice and free of any of that solder. Let's do the same over here. Get rid of all of the solder that's on the pads. Let's clean it up. Some isopropyl alcohol, cleaner and wipe, brush. Let's do the same over here. Get rid of as much of the flux as we can, if not all of it. Oh, and it looks like I'm missing a pad. Given that it came off while brushing, I'm sure that it's not important. All right, let's add some flux, and I'm just going to smear it around with my finger. That looks good. Line up the IC with a dot in the top left there. Come in with a low to middle range airflow at 300 degrees Celsius. Slowly work it around, and we're going to see it kind of snap into place. A little bit of movement there. There it goes. There it snaps into place. So what I like to do is add a little bit more flux around the border. Give it one more float and then a tap. Now here we go. We're going to heat it up, heat it up, heat it up. Got the heat directed away from the flex cable, by the way. It's going up towards the screen. And there's the tap on that side. I like to tap it over here. Well, a little tap. Should be good. All right. Let's let that cool down while we move over to the other. I see. Add some flux. Smear it around. And again, I have no idea if this is going to bring back true tone, but it's worth a shot seeing as there isn't really a solution that I know of in the industry. I'm going to pause the video here for a second because at the time I didn't have access to this. This is a new attachment that does cover the 13 Pro, 13 Pro Max, 14 Pro, and 14 Pro Max. So true tone is transferable with the programmer now. Back to the video. Let's line up the IC. Dot goes in the top left just like the other one. Let's move it into place. That looks good. And let's warm it up. Same temperature. There it goes, snapped into place. A lot faster than the other one. Add a little bit of flux 
on the side here, it'll kind of it'll kind of seep under. There you can see it kind of creep all the way to the other side. Nice little tap here. Another tap, that's good. All right, so let's go ahead and test it and see if this now works or if it still works. Connect up the proximity sensor. We'll connect the display, connect up the battery, and let's turn it on. Apple logo, that's good. All right, put in the passcode. go into the settings. Would you look at that? No notification. Well, that's a bummer. I mean, I'm glad that the message is gone. I was hoping True Tone would uh, come back. Let me go reflow it one more time, maybe. Because I'm assuming that's where True Tone is, is stored, but I could be wrong. So let me go uh, try to refloat that one more time, and we'll we'll try it again. All right, let's turn it back on one more time. See if we, uh, after a reflow, get through to back. I doubt it. I can't find anyone online being able to restore it. All the other models, you know, it would work. The programmers, you know, they can they can do that. So let's try it again. I wonder if a reset would, would do it. But I mean, for the, at least the uh, at least the notification isn't there. No uh, display notification. So. I'd say that's a win. Let me know in the comments below. We'll put the brackets back and we'll close it up. Whenever a display is replaced on an iPhone, one of the features that is potentially lost is True Tone. Here on the iPhone X, True Tone is located here on this flex cable. Same for the XR, the XS, and XS Max. You can kind of see a pattern here forming with the iPhone 11, 11 Pro, 11 Pro Max. But here, things switch up with the iPhone 12, 12 Pro. No longer is it in this IC, but it's on the flex cable itself. And then it disappears under the bracket for the 12 mini, 12 Pro Max, 13, 13 mini, 13 Pro, and 13 Pro Max, as well as the 14, 14 Plus, 14 Pro, and 14 Pro Max. The display I see, it's located here on the Flex, will vary a little bit in the newer models, but the majority of the time it sits here kind of dead center on the Flex. I used to transfer this IC over on the displays, so that's why I was under the impression that on this display, I could pull off this IC, given that they're always in this bottom corner, and recover True Tone somehow. But unbeknownst to me, it's under the bracket here. That's why even if you remove this IC, you can still read the True Tone off of this flex. You just can't damage the flex in the process. To recap what we've learned in this video, don't waste your time with the IC that's on the side of the display. It has nothing to do with True Tone, or the display message. Focus on the display IC, get a programmer so that you can transfer True Tone without having to do any additional solder work. At least hopefully you've learned how to remove and replace the display IC using a hot air rework station and a soldering iron on an iPhone display. There are other ways to do this repair. If you have your own tips and tricks, leave them in the comments below. Like and subscribe if you haven't already for videos like this in the future. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video.